I told the truth about his positions. Let's see, on legalizing drugs and fracking and believing in sanctuary cities and states and getting violent criminals out of jail, uh, abortion up until the moment of birth, no restrictions at all whatsoever. So instead of accusing me of lying, which we didn't do, um, John needs to quit his whining, stop his crying, man up, put on his hoodie, defend his radical opinions, and John, show me where you think I lied. Stop hiding behind your supporters and begging them for money, trying to raise money off my name, and counter me yourself. You can have the whole hour one-on-one -on -one with me on this program if you want it. I'll even throw in an, an extra three hours of my radio show on over 700 stations. So come on in. We're ready. Man up. Stop whining. Come on the show. Shouldn't be a problem for John. He claims to be a tough, rugged champion of the working man. He's got the goatee, wears his hoodie wherever he goes, likes to roll up his sleeves and show off those tattoos. He's a self-made individual, he claims, fighting for what's right. Well, that's what he would have you believe. Here's the reality. It's all a show. It's all one big, giant farce. John Fetterman grew up extremely wealthy. He grew up in an affluent suburb of York, Pennsylvania. He spent a significant amount of time in college, especially, well, very expensive schools that I'm sure Daddy paid for. But he doesn't really have much work experience. His 13 years as mayor of a tiny little town of Braddock was a part-time, semi-volunteer position. It only paid 150 bucks a year. Until the age of 49, Mr. Hoodie John Fetterman relied on mommy and daddy to pay for his weed or whatever else he wanted. His yearly salary came from daddy and a free house from his sister. His sister sold him a house for a dollar. By the way, Dr. Oz paid for all the houses he lives in by working hard like most people in Pennsylvania. So make no mistake, there's nothing rugged about John Fetterman, mentally or physically. Now, in May, the 53-year-old did suffer from a debilitating stroke. He was unable to attend his primary night victory party. He hasn't been physically or mentally able to campaign until recently. And at a short and rare campaign stop in Pennsylvania, all of 11 minutes, John Fetterman struggled to communicate even a little bit. Take a look. We could have picked any part of Pennsylvania where we're going to start the campaign trail starting. Let me tell you, two years ago, I was talking to the, the media and saying them folks, you want to know who's going to be the next president? Do you know what I said? I said, tell me one thing. Tell me who wins, Pe is it, who wins Erie? 25 of those counties, more votes. 25 of those, 50, uh, those 54 red counties, more votes more votes than Dr. Oz in those counties as well, too. I gave away the lieutenant governor governor in Pennsylvania, the only lieutenant governor in the history to do that. And you can count on us to eliminate the filibuster. <laughs> eliminate the filibuster and let, let's get some stuff done for America. Now, John Fetterman clearly is struggling. In all sincerity, I hope he gets well, but obviously he's not fit to serve the people of Pennsylvania. But far more disturbing are his insane positions on a number of key issues and, as always, being hidden by the mainstream media mob. Now, here's Fetterman's position on oil and gas. Take a look at this, especially how important this is to Pennsylvania. I think it's something that has to eventually go away. Uh, and I would like to see it, you know, transition out. And now you have a president who's building that back and making decisive actions like canceling the Keystone Pipeline, which some people don't support. And, and I, I think he made the right call. All right, Mr. Hoodie, no fracking, no pipelines, no oil, no gas. That is an $80 billion industry in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania with thousands of high-paying career jobs in the energy sector. I know you are used to not working. Most people in Pennsylvania work damn hard, and John Fetterman wants to put all these people out of work and out of business? That would send the entire state of Pennsylvania's economy into an all-out tailspin. And that's not all. It gets worse. Here's John Fetterman's position on violent crime. Take a look. I was on a panel with Secretary Wetzel uh, earlier before the pandemic hit, and he said something remarkable that I agree with. He said, we could reduce our prison population by a third 
and not make anyone less safe in Pennsylvania. And that's a profound statement. It's also profound. Violent crime in many cities in Pennsylvania went up 60 percent as he was the lieutenant governor. Lieutenant Governor. In other words, he wants to release thousands of violent felons back on the streets. And it's not just rhetoric. During his time as Pennsylvania's lieutenant governor, he tried to free scores of violent criminals, including one convicted murderer who robbed and killed an 18 year old girl in order to buy heroin. That, do you want that in Pennsylvania? And by the way, John Fetterman also wants to make heroin legal and accessible. Take a look. They're just like, wait a second, what are you talking about? Like, you want to legalize heroin, and why are you talking, you know, why do you care about these things? I think it's important that we as a society have all the options on the table, including um, uh, needle exchange, which is only technically legal in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and even safe injection sites that are being considered, like, say, in Philadelphia.